minutes. We're going to start with the big story, though, the gathering on Mackinac Island. The Detroit Regional Chamber puts it on every year. Business leaders, politicians, nonprofit heads, pretty much anyone who is poised to make some kind of change here in Michigan gathers here every spring. Let's head on up to Mackinac Island to the porch of the Grand Hotel. It's the nicest spot in the state. And that's where Devin Skillian is right now. Hey, Devin, it's good to see you. You know, you and I have covered this policy conference for years. There is an official agenda of what people are talking about. And then there is the unofficial agenda, which is the conversations happening at the cocktail party. So why don't you go ahead and give us a sense of what the big topics are this time around? Well, you're exactly right. You and I always laugh at uh, the, 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 uh, the chamber can put out its agenda and then there's the one that happens on its own. That's for sure. Uh, for starters, look behind me today. If you seek a pleasant peninsula, as the saying goes, this is just a gorgeous day. Uh, sometimes that can be bad for the conference because people want to be out uh, on the porch, out walking around Mackinac Island instead of being in listening to the sessions. Um, the agenda itself is focused on a lot of the things that you might expect. Um, it was a year ago that Governor Whitmer uh, announced a, a new department basically aimed at growing the state's population. We now have uh, a, a chief growth officer. In fact, she's going to join us tomorrow at this time, uh, Hillary Rowe, to talk about uh, what she's been able to accomplish over these last 12 months. But uh, so that, that's a big focus of things today. Um, we're going to I'm going to be talking with Chuck Todd later on the main stage here in a short time. In fact, we'll be streaming that for you here uh, on, on Local 4 Plus, uh, obviously because everybody here is talking about politics in this big year. One of the things, though, that is a great source of frustration to many people is that one of what we thought was going to be a centerpiece, Christy, of, of these couple of days, uh, this, uh, the first really big, robust Senate debate is not happening. Uh, Mike Rogers pulled out, uh, Alyssa Slotkin pulled out, and then the chamber decided to pull the plug on the thing. It's the first time that anybody uh, in the history of this event uh, for statewide office has decided to not participate in the chamber's debate. And it has left a lot of people like me and my guests, who we're going to be talking to here in just a second, Richard Zuba. Uh, and you, I think, too, as well, Christy, wondering, doesn't anybody want to debate anymore? Apparently, we're going to get debates between, well, we've got the, uh, the annual flies or uh, uh, gnats. Uh, apparently, we, we, we're going to get a debate, we think, between uh, Donald Trump and Joe Biden. Although my uh, panel on Flashpoint on Sunday expressed uh, some doubt as to whether uh, both of those debates would happen or even one of them. So it's really this, this great centerpiece of going back to, I mean, think about the history of debates in America. We can't quite get Lincoln Douglas anymore, can we? Uh, so no debate for the Senate. And I think that's a big disappointment to a lot of people here. And that was a, a big topic of conversation, Christy. Last you know, and, and I think it's really interesting, too, before, um, before the conference every year, there's always polls about certain things and you are talking about politics and the mood of the state right now and I know you've got Richard there if you want to go ahead and bring him in on some of these uh, poll yep. results which I think is really interesting yeah in fact uh, let's let's bring in Richard Zuba from the uh, Glenn Gariff group uh, our pollster at local four but also the pollster for uh, the Detroit Regional Chamber Sandy Barua just sort of did the formal opening of this uh, of this conference even though it kind of got started in a, a, a slow rollout yesterday but Oh, right off the top, Richard, he was talking about your findings about where people are and how they feel about democracy right now. Michiganders um, are increasingly dissatisfied, and I guess that would translate to worried about the future of democracy. Well, you know, right off the bat, 68% of Michigan voters are dissatisfied with the state of democracy. And when we asked voters why, they just point fingers at each other. Democrats blame Republicans, Republicans blame Democrats, independents blame the polarization of both sides. But then we ask this really fascinating question about is democracy the best form of government? We've and also got, we've got the numbers on that that you're seeing here as well. Go ahead. Only 67% of Michigan voters, and these are likely voters in November, thought democracy was the best form of government. 17% said it really doesn't matter if our government is based on democracy or not. Another 5% chose autocracy. And in, ten, in certain situations, in certain I guess, situations. right? Authoritarianism, right, yeah. right. And then another 10% just couldn't even form an opinion on this. And these, yeah. are, these aren't residents at large. These are likely November voters, where a third of the voters can't commit that democracy is the best form Can of government. Can you think of a time in American history, and obviously we've had 
many, many struggles over the years. We've had a civil war. We've had, uh, we've had all the unrest that we had during the 60s. We've had world wars. But can you think of a time in American history where only two-thirds of the respondents of a poll felt that democracy was the best way forward? You know, I was asked the question if we've ever asked this question. And my response is I've been polling Michigan now for 40 years. And I've never felt like we needed to ask this question. <laughs> right, right. And, you know, but I, I equate this to, you know, if you own a house, there's water pouring in through the foundation. We're not doing anything in the foundation of democracy. It is daily getting corroded. And there's going to come a point where we can't turn back. We've got to pay attention now. And when you when you meant to talk about how Republicans answer one way, Democrat that pointing, this has real consequences. We are right now in the middle of what historians are telling us is uh, historically one of the least effective congressional terms ever. We're just not talking to each other anywhere right now. We're not. It's not that we're not only not talking to each other. We're looking at each other as enemies. And, you know, this is a really rare situation where Americans view their neighbor of a different party as the enemy. And that is a dangerous, dangerous moment for this country. That's a really tough time to be. I want to get to our, our we, we've got another question here that we had that I, I thought was also fascinating. And this is the continued disconnect when we talk about uh, the economy. Um, you and I have talked about this so many times that how it used to be how you felt about the economy informed how you felt about a party now or an administration. Now, how you feel about the administration or the party informs how you decide the economy is doing. But talk about what you because 61 percent of the people that you ask that you talk to said that they felt the economy was in trouble or maybe even headed to a recession. Right. We are in a clear era of misinformation. And that applies to how we are viewing things like the economy. 61% uh, uh, think we are weakening or in recession. Yet, similar number say they're do they personally are doing the same or better than before COVID. They're doing fine. <laughs> right. You know, we ask the question, we do this regularly, are you concerned at all about losing your job? And in Michigan right now, it's only 14% that are concerned. I've been doing this in Michigan for 40 years, as I've said. This is a rare moment where Michiganders are not concerned about losing their job. In fact, one of the most bipartisan things we see in this poll is voters across the board say, if you want a good job, they're available in Michigan. And yet, when we look at who is saying the economy is so bad, it is disproportionately Republican voters. They are being driven by that conversation. Yeah within their bubble. You know, if COVID taught us anything, it's that we live in bubbles and increasingly we're finding out our information is contained within those bubbles. You know, when I got to Michigan many years ago, one of, the, one of the signs of trouble that everybody thought was that we were a state where people really didn't believe that a college education was all that necessary for success. And for many, for many, many years, you know, you, you, you came out of high school, you had a great job maybe coming in the plant, and uh, before you knew it, you had a, a cottage up north or a boat. Uh, then that started to change. And, but now we're seeing it return, and I, it, I think it has a lot to do with the fact that the cost of that four-year degree has gotten so high that it's gotten harder for people to argue that it's necessary. But talk about your findings on this. So we found, once again, that only 22 percent of Michigan voters believe a four-year degree is worth the money. And part of the problem, we also asked them, how much does it cost? And we sure. gave them a range of options. We asked them, how much financial aid is available to you? And we gave them a range of options. The reality is voters don't know. They're all over the map. And I think, you know, first of all, this is one of the greatest threats to Michigan's future, is the economy is moving to more education, whatever form that is. If you don't think you need it, Michigan falls behind. But voters need some clear clear answers. What's the cost of this? And they're not getting those answers. It's not clear from school to school, from in-state to out-state. That needs to be clarified. We clearly need skilled trades workers. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. But when we talk about the things that are happening right now that are exciting on the Michigan horizon, it's what's going on at the Michigan Central train station. It's the new innovation center being built in the Foxtown area. It's the new campus that Henry Ford Hospital is trying to create. We're to be a part of that, you, these are 
college uh, required jobs. Well, you know, one of the things that is clear in this era of misinformation yeah. is we cannot agree on collective facts anymore. <laughs> And yeah. one of those collective facts is if you have a four-year degree, your lifetime earnings are substantially higher. So if you want that quality of life, you need to invest in that four-year degree of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. But we can't agree on that collective fact anymore. And that's, yeah. that's, again, one of the problems, one of the things that is corroding our democracy. Well, and this is all, again, this just so, so well tees up uh, the, the, uh, the, the task that is facing Michigan right now, trying to grow its population without these things in place, it's really hard to move forward. Richard, thanks so much for, for talking to me. It's always great to, to spend time Good to time be here on a beautiful yeah, day. Yeah, not so bad, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Christy, a uh, quick thought, a uh, couple quick thoughts about what's coming up this afternoon. I'll be uh, interviewing uh, Chuck Todd on the theater stage here, the uh, mm -hmm. former host of Meet the Press and the uh, now the political director for NBC News. Well, that'll be coming up at uh, 1.45. We're going to stream that on Local 4. A little later on today, uh, a conversation with Dan Gilbert. Always really interesting to hear where he thinks uh, things are right now in not only Michigan, but in uh, specifically in Detroit. So all that coming up here on the really the first full day of the conference, Christy. Yeah, sounds good. All right, enjoy it all, Devin. We'll catch you back here streaming live with Chuck Todd and, of course, as Devin was talking about, also Dan Gilbert and then Mayor Mike Duggan. All right, Devin, we'll see you again uh, this afternoon and then tomorrow. So make sure you stay with us here on Local 4 Plus for coverage of that.